We've got some Week 12 OFL action. A big game in the ONFC West here is the San Francisco 49ers sitting at a record of 7-3 and three, are set to take on the 6-4 and four Arizona Cardinals. Niners coming off a 35-6 to six win two weeks ago against the Cardinals. And I'd say this is a must-win game for Arizona. It's an important one for San Fran, but it's a must-win game for the Cardinals. And at quarterback, it's the XFL backup now. Cardell Jones, because Tyree Jackson, we stand as Cardell Jones coming in to start this game in place of Mitchell Trubisky, who got benched, as there's a nice play by Dalvin Tomlinson. Now fourth and eight, here is Graham Gano with a field goal. It is good, and the Cardinals are the first ones on the board here in this one. So now here comes out the Niner offense, led by Lamar Jackson and company. It's been a, it's been a rocky season for Jackson, as on second down, that defender may or may not have just mossed somebody. Or not the defender, the receiver, sorry. And then from the 27, nice play for C.D. Lamb. But the ball is going to be jarred three. Forced by Bobby Wagner and picked up by Kevin Byard. And that'll be uh, Cardinals' ball as you just can't have those fumbles. Marquise Lee, not C.D. Lamb. My apologies. So the Cardinals have it back now. Second and eight. Handoff, but that's going nowhere. The stop is going to be made by the rookie out of South Carolina, Javon Kinlaw and company. So the 49ers will get it back now. From the 39, Lamar Jackson is intercepted by Casey Hayward. You can't spell intercepted without the D. And you can't spell Luke Keekley without making plays. This Keekley gets the sack late in the first half, but on second down, Cardell Jones threading the needle. Beautiful pass over to Deshaun Jackson. And the Cardinals will get this play off in time before the end of the sec before the end of the second quarter. But Shaquem Griffin will get the sack. One hand, don't care. Let's move on to the third quarter now. Second and four. Lamar. Nice pass over to his tight end, Hakeem Butler, for the first down, bringing it to the 42. And then second and five. Lamar Jackson under pressure, and he's going to be sacked. There is Malik Jackson going downstairs where Daddy hides the vodka. So now from the 34, Niners will get it back a few possessions later. As you can tell, it's been a defensive slugfest in this game. And on paper, these are two of the best defenses in the league. But offensively, they're kind of weak. As there's Bobby Wagner with his second fumble force of the game, and it's going to be recovered by Arizona. There's a flag on the play, but it's an illegal block in the back on Hakeem Butler, so the penalty would end up being declined, and Arizona gets the hat trick when it comes to takeaways. Still in the third quarter, by the way, as Cardell Jones launches a dot for Julio hit the stretch. Julio Jones with a nice play, and then to start the fourth quarter, Arizona trying to make this a two-score game as Jones in the corner of the end zone. Nice pass for Jones. The booth would review this one, but the play would stand, and that would be a touchdown for Arizona, and if you look at it, it's close, but I think they made a right call on the field. Julio Jones got his feet in bad coverage by Jeff Akuda, it looks like, and just like that, it would be only nine to nothing because the kick has been blocked. What did Tom Brady do to me on Twitter? Blocked. Just kidding. Tom Brady didn't block me on Twitter, but that'd be funny. Uh, anyway, second and nine at the 32 for Lamar Jackson and the boys. Niners need to start making a run, and players like that will help. The rookie, C.D. Lamb, with the spin move and the gain after the catch. Now from the 23, San Francisco is getting close to the red zone. Might finally be able to put up some points for crying out loud as Jackson is sacked. Malik Jackson with his second of the ball game. Big play for Arizona. That will lead to the field goal unit coming out here for San Fran. The kick from Josh. I got myself a $17 million Lambo. And I also got myself a nice leg to make those field goals. Now it's 9-3. to three. Can the Cardinals pump the brakes on this game? Or can San Francisco come back as Keekly forcing a loss of about 3 or 4? But the Niners have to start this drive at the 1. And... 
they're going backwards. Two hands for safety. Had about three Cardinals in the backfield, and Alex Collins was able, unable to do anything. So that was an eight-point game. Still technically a one-score game, thanks to the, the blocked extra point. As there's Vaughn Miller going downstairs, where I already made the vodka joke. Anyway, third and five now for the Cardinals. Can they punch it in? Not quite. The tackle is just made in time. And now San Francisco has the opportunity to drive down the field and win this football, or at least tie this football game. But Niners fans, I'm not going to leave your hopes up high for too long. As the pass is picked off by B-Wags, and he's taking it for six. And the Cardinals will make it 18-3. to Why not get the cherry on top? Another pick six. This time it's Kevin Byard. And yeah, San Francisco does not have much to say after that. 25-3 to is your final. Lamar Jackson, ouch. Just ouch. Five takeaways for the Cardinals. Zero for the Niners. San Francisco did average 6.9 yards a carry, to be fair, which is pretty nice. And I'm going to be honest here. I am the Niners in the Sim League. The game was... I did a separate game for this. It was 12-0 in the third, but then I realized Mitchell Trubisky was starting for the Cardinals instead of Cardell Jones, and I could have kept it going. But since I'm a good guy, I quit out of the game to let Cardell Jones start, and that happened. So that's what I get for being a good guy. You'll love to see it. As the Falcons beat the Panthers on a high-scoring battle, and Atlanta is 7-4 and four all of a sudden, tied for first in the conference. Now, to be fair, there are 7-4 seven, seven and four teams in the conference, but still... Atlanta sort are coming out of nowhere as the Texans get themselves another win, this time over the Bengals. And after a slow start, Houston's been playing better. 3-1 and one in their last four after starting off 0-7. Not that Houston's really going to make a playoff run, but still, good for them when it comes to pride. In the Battle of Pennsylvania, it's the Steelers who come out on top of the Eagles. Three touchdowns for both Teddy Bridgewater and the rookie Marquise. Do you know the way? The ONFC East is a really fun battle. You got the Eagles, Giants, and Redskins at 7-4, and four, and the Cowboys right behind at 6-5, and five, so that's anybody's division to win. The Patriots beat the Chargers 27-20. Don't look now, but the defending champs are back. After a really slow start to the season for New England, they're playing a lot better these past couple of weeks. Now sitting at 6-5, and five, tied for first place in the division with Miami Dolphins. If you're a Miami fan, watch out. New England's coming in hot. But the Dolphins beat the Chiefs in overtime, 43-37, 469 yards, nice, and five touchdown passes for the rookie out of Liberty, Buckshot Calvert. So the Dolphins are now 6-5. Chiefs are one of two teams in the entire league with eight wins, but they're unable to get nine in this one as we got the Giants beating the Cleveland Browns. Jacob Eason's been actually pretty good for the Browns. Got to give him credit. But it's New York who gets the win, and they are quietly becoming one of the better teams in the conference, and they have a legit shot to make the postseason. Bears lose yet again. Calvin Mentor, 69 QB rating. Nice. But it seems like he's really coming down to earth after a hot start. Meanwhile, Tua Tunga Vailoa with another solid game as Washington is also now 7-4. and four. Once Rieger is not the coach is when they decide to start winning. Isn't that funny? 38-24, we got Seattle over the Rams, Seahawks at 6-5. and five. They're alive in this ONFC race as well, even though they've been kind of on the back burners looking in. But they're only one game back of both Arizona and San Francisco, so it's possible as the Bucks put up 28 in the fourth quarter to defeat the Raiders 42-28. Tampa Bay has not had a great season, but if they can string a few wins together, shoot, they could make another wild card appearance again and maybe make another run after winning a playoff game last season in Detroit. Bills beat the Jets by three, 22-19. New York is sort of out of a playoff race, but Buffalo, a nice game here from Jake Fromm. They're only a game behind New England and Miami, so they're still kind of in it, I suppose. As next up, we got the Saints beating the Broncos, 24-17. Saints are only a game or two behind of Atlanta and... Carolina, so they could make a run in that division. Nice game from Tariq Cohen. And Denver, they're also coming down to earth after starting off the season 5-0. and They've lost four of their last six, I want to say, putting them at 7-4. and The Packers beat the Titans 28-17. to 
And after that hot start from the Bears, the Packers are now officially in first place in the division. They have sole possession of first place in the ONFC North, which is very hard to believe considering they were 0-3 in one, at one point and the Bears looked unstoppable. Titans take another loss and they're now two games behind the Colts who end up beating Detroit 24-10. Another great game from Jack Jackson who's quietly having an elite season right now. Lions continuing to fall out of the playoff race. I would not expect to see them play in any January games. So there's a similarity between the OFL and the NFL. The Lions not playing in January. And then you got the Ravens upsetting the Dallas Cowboys here. It's a shame we can't have nice things. If only everybody in the ONFC East was 7-4. But Dallas has to be the one. This very 6-5. Baltimore uh, playing for pride at this point. They are now 3-8 and eight after one game away from the OFL Bowl last year. And then the final game of the week, the Jaguars beat the Vikings. Vikings look like they're in full tank mode, while Jacksonville, who started off the season 5-0, have not won a game since week 5 until today. They get a win over Minnesota, and because of their hot start, they are still in the playoff race as we take a look at week 13. Got a good slate of games here coming up on the schedule. I'm curious which one we're going to end up watching. And then looking at the standings, very evenly matched. Not a lot of elite teams starting the ONFC North. Bengals a game ahead of the Steelers. In the South, the Colts two games ahead of Tennessee and Jacksonville. In the East, it's a 2 8 tie between the Dolphins and Pats. Bills still in the mix. In the West, Chiefs a game ahead of the Broncos, two ahead of the Chargers. In the ONFC North, Bears are a full game behind Green Bay now. Bears on a five game losing streak. In the South, Panthers and Falcons tied for first. Saints in close second. In the NFC, ONFC East, as I mentioned, three, seven, and four teams, and then the six and five Cowboys. And then in the West, Cardinals and Niners at seven and four. Seahawks a game behind them at six and five. So every division is within one or two games. I think the OAFC South might be the only division not within one game. And then in the ONFC, the top seven teams are all seven and four right now. That's pretty hard to believe with multiple six and five teams in the mix as well. So as you can tell, this is really, really close right now. And these next few weeks are going to be big in separating the top teams from the second tier of teams. Your players of the week go to Matt Ryan, Buckshot Calvert, Bobby Wagner, and JC Jackson. I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, have a good one. Peace out. Doodles.